In this video, we'll look at the molecular geometry for BEF2, that's beryllium fluoride. So the first thing we need is a Lewis structure. And when you look at the Lewis structure, it's kind of interesting. The beryllium, it doesn't have an octet. That's okay because beryllium is an exception. It only needs four valence electrons there. Fluorine, both of the fluorine atoms, those have octets. And you'll note they're both on opposite sides. If we try to visualize the molecular geometry, the fluorine atoms, they'll push away from each other to be as far away as possible. That gives us this linear molecular geometry, and the bond angle would be 180 degrees. Let's take a look at a visualization of that. So the purple, that's the central beryllium atom. We're going to add two fluorine atoms. We add one, and watch what happens when we add the second one. They push away, so they're as far away as possible from each other. That gives us the linear molecular geometry with a bond angle of 180 degrees. Because we don't have any lone pairs, the molecular geometry is the same as the electron geometry, linear. Let's go back to our Lewis structure. So back at our Lewis structure, if we couldn't visualize this, we could also look at the steric number. So we have two things attached, two atoms, and we don't have any lone pairs. So if we look at a table here, we have a steric number of two and zero lone pairs. That means we have a linear molecular geometry with a bond angle of 180 degrees. If you were using the AXE notation, that's where we have A, that's the central atom, the beryllium, X, the number of atoms attached, we have one, two, and E, the number of lone pairs, we don't have any lone pairs. You would then either have memorized that AX2 is linear, or you could look it up on a table if you were allowed. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry, electron geometry, and bond angles for BEF2, beryllium fluoride. Thanks for watching.